This is called a Courteau exercise, named after Mr. Alfred Courteau. Where's the book? Damn it. I don't have the book. Anyway, he's a beautiful man. Very French. About 100 years ago, he was very famous, popular classical pianist. Uh, and he was exceptionally anal about his technique. Um, I like him because uh, it's a very efficient, I'm all about efficiency. I have very little time to practice. So um, if I can get it all packed in really quick, great. So this is the type of thing, if you do it the first thing, it's like, uh, um, uh, I don't know, stretching or something, or it's more, more accurately just focusing your mind on uh, the proper technique. And when you do that, when you check in with yourself uh, every day, uh, and this, is, this should take like five minutes, this is not a big involved thing. Um, you can, of course, you can always expand and spend hours on this if you want. But if you just do like a quick check-in every day, then that will carry over into your normal playing. It'll become your default uh, pos hand positioning, your default way of moving on this instrument, uh, which is really important. So first things first, you always want to sit in the same place in a piano. Usually where that lock is, at your E, you put your belly button there. I tend to actually, I like C personally, but that's me. Everybody's a little, and you'd be surprised how big of a difference that is from this key to that key. Wherever it is, make a conscious choice. I would suggest starting at E and then seeing what what comes of that. Um, only because this is, this is the middle of the piano, so you can, you know, uh, <laughs> it's the middle. Uh, you can split it that way. Um, so feet out in front of you. I know I sit a lot of times with my feet back here, but that's because I'm an organist. Uh, and it's a horrible thing to do, but I'm just used to it. So uh, um, uh, I don't know if you do sit-ups ever <laughs> or core strength training. Uh, this takes a lot more core strength. Uh, because you're just, I mean, you're sitting like this. Mm -hmm. So you're putting all the pressure here, mm -hmm. as opposed to here, you're sharing the load with your feet, mm -hmm. uh, which on a piano is how you want to do it. You want to sit um, consciously at a certain point on the bench. I wouldn't sit all the way forward. I used to sit like this, if you can believe it, like just barely holding on. Mm -hmm. And you definitely don't want to do this. It just wants that you want it to feel balanced, mm -hmm. right? So just a little bit on your feet. Uh, from there, perfect posture. <laughs> Zip it up. <laughs> Strong core, but everything here is relaxed. All your shoulders relaxed, arms relaxed. Everything relaxed basically except for your core, which is holding you upright. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the height of the piano bench is really important. You want to have uh, um, just a little bit down. So not a 90 degree angle with your elbows, but if you did 90 degrees, went out a little bit and down a little bit, you're good. Then you got circulation, blood flow, all that kind of stuff. Um, your wrist, you want to basically flat. Um, and then the rest of it is um, arches. So basically like you're holding a cantaloupe or a large orange. <laughs> so not like this. <laughs> if you're going to push a key down like this, it's really hard. But if you support yourself, it's easy, right? And that is true regardless of if you're here pushing a key down or if you're all the way up here or if you're on a black key. So when you go to the black keys, you notice I'm not going to do this. And most people just sort of go, oh, I'm going to reach over there. But that makes that flatness, it makes it really difficult to play. So if you uh, take this angle and you move four up on top of the black keys, then you're going to be in command of them and that's what we want. Uh, so first thing, if you just kind of wave like that, this is your hinge and then if you can go like here and then boom, boom, boom. This is basically what you're doing and then your thumb <coughs> is going to go like that so you don't move your whole hand with your thumb. Anyway, th so this, this exercise I love because um, you can't really do it wrong. I mean, it just every day, you're going to be doing it inefficiently at first, but every day you get a little bit better at it. 
uh, if you're if you're doing it right. So um, I think I just contradicted myself, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> do yeah, do what I do, not what I say. So you're gonna the first thing uh, you're gonna have both hands. So we're nice and centered, zipped up on our E. Uh, and let's just start with your right hand. Your thumb is going to be on C. And you're going to push all the keys down. And you're going to notice right away that you're going to be pushing too hard. You're going to be, your lats are going to be engaged. Your, your uh, what's that, your wrist. Um, what we're trying to achieve here is the least amount of tension possible. So you want to push all the keys down, but you're not pushing any further. So in other words, if you were to let any little bit of weight up, the keys would start to come up. So you want to find that balance where they're just down, but you're not exerting any unnecessary force, right? So it's a very short distance and a very small amount of weight that you have to be pushing down. So you have to understand that. We're, we're trying to develop efficiency of motion, uh, efficiency of um, um, energy expenditure, you look at virtuoso pianists that play these concertos and things. They're playing just all up for like an hour straight, and it's a lot. It's like being a marathon runner. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, this is a machine that does the work for you. So you're supposed to not exert yourself. If you're like sweating, mm -hmm. chill out. Mm -hmm. Not doing it right. You should be sweating with emotion, not with fatigue from the instrument. You know what I mean? Uh... So I'm pushing everything down, but <coughs> my core is engaged, but everything else is relaxed, and I have good posture, right? I have good curves. My wrist is basically flat. Uh, and then, so what I'm going to do is, while holding all the keys down, I'm going to exercise one finger at a time. And what I'm doing is I'm letting the key come all the way up, and then all the way down. And I'm not losing contact with the key. I'm just going up and down. It's a very small motion. And at the same time, I'm gonna notice that my pinky is gonna start to go, ah, you're starting gonna, you know, pushing down, you know? So you have to retain that feeling of just enough pressure to hold the key down in control of the key, but you're not overexerting and you're not letting the key come up. This is an exercise in body awareness. So when I'm doing this also, I might feel like, oh, my left toes are clenching. Why is that happening? Okay, let's let go of the left toes. You know, or whatever's happening. My shoulder, more likely, is going to be going like that. So you have to learn how to direct the signal straight from your brain to the specific muscles that move only what you're trying to move. So I've done that, I'm going to say six times, and then I'm going to move on. I can do six of these, and again, I'm just, and then to your middle finger. Everything else that's not in motion is being held down, but not it with like a really high force is just barely enough to hold it down and I'm stable okay that's it then you make sure you, you know whatever in the beginning you're gonna be getting a lot of extra tension so just do it a little bit you know go through once move your wrist make sure there's no extra tension then do it maybe twice uh, and then go move on to your left hand Eventually, when you get good at this, you'll be able to do it hands together, but I want you to really focus on one hand at a time. So, nice and slow. This isn't about speed, this is about accuracy and precision in your movement. And this is going to take several months to really, you'll start noticing it in all of your playing. So once you do each finger individually, let's do uh, patterns, uh, so two at a time. So you'll go one, two, one, and nice separate notes, so not like really fast. Just do one, two, one, two. Do that maybe three times. And then you're gonna go one, three. Very separate, very slow. All the time checking in with your body. One, four, seeing where the tension is, seeing where you can release while still being in control. And then uh, one five. And then you're gonna do two three, two four, two five, three four, three five. And the fun one, 
four or five. Okay? And then that's it um, for each hand. Unless you want to do backwards too. Sorry, I get carried away, but five, four, five, three, five, two, five, one. But I don't want you to overexert yourself. Maybe wait till the second week to start that. I, again, you want to do this for like five minutes in the beginning because you're going to be doing it way too hard at first. Mm -hmm. Once you start to understand and, and your body allows you to do the things, then you can add to it. There's several steps, but this is the main one. 